Welcome to Canada's podcast, the number one podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. Hello, and welcome to Calgary's podcast on Canada's podcast network. I'm your host, Mario Taniguzzi, and joining me today is Raj Singh, who is founder and CEO of Fueled in Calgary. Thanks for joining us today, Raj. Thanks so much for having me, Mario. Well, let's start by asking you just a little bit about what Fueled is and what uh, you folks do. Sure. Um, yeah, so Fueled uh, really is the Amazon of energy. So uh, what we like to do is deliver an Amazon-like experience, uh, but really centered around heavy equipment. Um, so how the process works is we would work with energy and exploration companies, as well as service companies, energy service companies. They would consign equipment to fuel. We then send technicians out to inspect the equipment, uh, and we sell the equipment online uh, all over the world. Okay, so give me a little bit of the history of the, of the company. How did it start? When did it start? So the company started in 2013 uh, as Fueled, and then we pivoted about three years ago uh, when we saw an opportunity to really disrupt the way the secondary market was for equipment. Um, so yeah, so the fueled certified model, as we call it, where we actually go out and inspect equipment and sell it online, started about three years ago. And uh, what about your backgrounds? Uh, how did you uh, get involved in this? And and uh, you know, um, what were you doing beforehand? I was in the energy services business for quite some time. So uh, most of my experience was on the capital equipment uh, side of things, uh, on the compression and production business specifically. Uh, and that's really where I saw the opportunity to be able to do things a little bit, uh, a little bit differently. Okay. And, and why, why this career path for you? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good question. Sometimes I question it myself, but <laughs> uh, I think, you know, the, the opportunity presented itself. There was a, there was a market that was, uh, that wasn't transparent at all. Uh, and when we're dealing with such, such uh, um, very technical and very expensive item, in a, in a non-transparent market, it really got me thinking that there was a better way to do things, uh, similar to the way things are being done uh, on MLS, uh, for example. That is that is almost a perfect uh, perfect marketplace that's very transparent. Okay, so uh, you know, obviously, it's been challenging times here in uh, Calgary and in Alberta, especially for the oil patch. Um, tell me just a little bit about how business has been for you in the last uh, couple of years and. Uh, uh, and the impacts that uh, a uh, you know declining oil prices have had, as well as obviously now the the pandemic. Yeah, for us, for us, Mary, we've been we've been somewhat fortunate that this the the volatility in the business has actually been somewhat of a benefit for us. Um, what we've seen, what we've seen, number one, uh, when times are volatile like they are right now we find that people are more likely to adopt new innovations. So that's really helped us get market adoption. Um, secondly, uh, buy, uh, sellers are more likely to sell equipment in this, in this market, where we've seen in past during boom times, uh, companies are more likely to hoard equipment and sit on it for a rainy day. In this market, uh, we're, we're finding that sellers are much more uh, likely to sell equipment, which is perfect. And then on the buy side of the equation, there's always going to be a base load of production required in this business. Energy is not going anywhere anytime soon, regardless of what the narrative out there might might make you feel. Um, but those projects now need to be done uh, more quickly and more cost effectively. So that's definitely helped us on the on the buy side of the equation. As you look forward, um, Raj, what's your uh, what's your vision, I guess, for the company? Well, I think we still have a lot of work to do in the energy space. We still have a lot of market to grab and market to create. Um, so definitely expanding uh, internationally is something that's that's high on our radar and something that we did have plans to do this year. And, and, and obviously COVID disrupted that uh, disrupted that that plan. But we'll we'll jump back on that next year when we're able to do so. Um, so, yeah, so expand, expand uh, globally within energy and then also apply our model into different uh, into different verticals, and that's something that we're strongly looking at right now. Uh, so, what do you? Maybe you could explain that. What do you mean by different verticals? What kind of areas? Sure. Yeah. So today we've been very focused on energy and production equipment. Um, we see the next potential vertical being 
uh, heavy equipment, construction equipment, mining equipment, um, and then possibly agriculture. Okay, then super that. So, uh, have you got a history of uh, entrepreneurship in your family? Like, <laughs> I'm just curious of where this, uh, you know, where where does it come to, you know, the genesis of that for you? Yeah. I wouldn't say history of entrepreneurship, but definitely a, a, a history of grind and hustle in my family. My parents immigrated here uh, in the 70s and 80s and, uh, and did whatever it took to be, to be successful. Um, so I definitely have that as a background. Um, not necessarily entrepreneurship. My dad's a, an engineer and my mother is a physician, um, but I watched them grind it out uh, for a long time the same way that uh, we've grinded, you know, had to grind out for, for the last few years to get to where we are today. What's your um, uh, biggest, I guess, like for being a, um, an entrepreneur? My, my biggest like, and it's something that I actually discovered in, 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 as we built Fueled, but is to build culture. Um, it's something that I've become extremely passionate about. And I've been at other companies before where I've been a leader, but it's very difficult to, to, build, to build culture within a specific group. But for me, it's been extremely exciting and a, and a true passion for me uh, to build a culture for fuel that I think that for, for any entrepreneur um, um, should be exciting. Uh, how many people do you have in your company, by the way? We are, as of yesterday, we are, uh, we are nine people. Okay. And, and when you talk about building culture, what, what does that mean and, and, and what does that entail? Well, for me, it was somewhat selfish. I mean, I wanted to make I wanted to make work feel as comfortable as home. I spend a lot of time at work. I love work, um, but I wanted everybody to feel the same way. So that was sort of the starting point. The starting point was to make uh, to make work feel like home and make it a place where you want to go and to remove that sick feeling you sometimes people sometimes get on Sunday nights where they're dreading coming to work on Monday. Yeah, we wanted we really wanted to delete that. Um, so that was that was truly the starting point for how we established uh, how we established our our, our culture, um, and I guess the next one was really crystallizing our values. So our, our values are transparency, integrity, family, and fun, um, and they're values that are that are simple. They're simple to live by. They're the values that 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 I want to have myself, or I want my spouse or my kids to have. Um, so really, really living those values as a, as a company has really helped us solidify that culture. Okay, what is it on the flip side, what is it that you don't like about being an entrepreneur? Well, I think sometimes, you know, it's, I think sometimes it can be a lonely place. Um, there's, 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 it's not always smooth sailing as it might appear to be on the outside. Um, and sometimes it is, it, it is a difficult place to be. That being said, um, with the right team, like we have now, it makes those days a lot easier than they were uh, in the early days when it was just when it was just me. Yeah. As you were starting up the business, uh, Raj, what what were some of the the biggest challenges you faced uh, in starting up Fueled? Well, I think you know some of the biggest challenges are challenges that uh, that are I think somewhat inherent in the energy business is trying to get adoption of a new way of doing things. Um, so we got a lot of no's early on, and we also got a lot of people saying we wouldn't be successful uh, trying to try to do business in the way that we, we wanted to do business. So I think that was probably one of the most challenging uh, was one of the most challenging things was to get that early early adoption. Um, fortunately, we had some very strong customers uh, who guided us through that, and uh, you know a big thing for us was just making sure we listened to those customers. I think sometimes. As entrepreneurs, we think we have the best ideas, and we will we will do whatever's possible, and sometimes even die with that idea, uh, because we think it's right. Uh, for yeah. us, uh, partly out of necessity, we listened to customers, uh, and they helped us guide and shape our vision. Yeah, when you look at uh, uh, leadership uh, and entrepreneurs who are who are leaders, what makes a good leader uh, in a company? I, you know, I think it's probably different for different companies. For me, I think it is uh, authenticity. Um, I think it's humility. I think those two things are super important to get the trust of your people, um, especially as a especially as a small team. People want to know that their leader um, their leader is being honest with them in good times and bad. And so, yeah, uh, you know, I think if people say you wear your heart in your sleeve, that's something that I've definitely done 
through this business. Okay, then. Now, uh, when you uh, talk to fellow entrepreneurs, other business owners right now uh, in Calgary, what's the sense of the mood that you get um, for how people are out there right now? Yeah, it's. I think it's a bit of a it's a it's a bit of a mix because there are some people that have done uh, extremely well through the through um, through COVID and the price and the and the energy crisis that's out there, but I'd say in general I think there is uh, there's an overall sense of unknown. Um, you know, people don't know what to expect uh, next year. In 2019, we were excited about 2020. Yeah. And uh, 2020, it looks like we're excited about 2021. So I think unknown would probably be the one word I would use. Uh, in conversations with other entrepreneurs and and speaking with other entrepreneurs uh, any pieces of advice you would give them uh, to deal and cope with these times that we're in i think i think one thing that i've i've come to um uh, that gives me some comfort is nothing's permanent um and, and, and none of this of what we see right now is permanent and there will be better times and i think that's important to important to remember and hang on to because otherwise there can be there could be dark days and those dark days there's a light on the other side and it might be cliche um but it's true and when we've been through it we've been through it this year i mean it's uh there nothing is permanent things will get better yeah now as you look uh you know throughout your career uh you know during that time is there anything that sting as uh, sticks out in your mind of the sort of the best piece of advice you've ever either heard or been told or read about being an entrepreneur? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think, again, for me, I'd probably take it back to listening, listening to the customer, um, acutely, acutely listening to the customer and never thinking you're smarter than them. Um, to me, that's been a big one. My dad come, has been in, in sales for a long time and something that he taught me uh, was you have two ears and one mouth and and yeah. to use those with the customer and it's something that uh, i think is very very important uh for entrepreneurs yeah what about uh everybody talks about work life balance these days uh you know it's always tough for an entrepreneur obviously uh how's your work life balance yeah you know what it's still something i'm trying to figure out um both my wife and i are both entrepreneurs so it makes it extra challenging um Again, I would probably take it back to culture. I've, I've created a workplace that, uh, that uh, or we've created a workplace that is a lot like home. Um, so my kids come to the office on the weekend with me. My kids, when they have the Friday off, they'll come in, uh, they'll come in um, to the office. Um, but, uh, but, but also, I'm also trying to do my best and, and, and making sure I'm not missing kids' activities and doing all that other stuff, which, I, which, which you have to do uh, early on in starting a business. How old are your kids, by the way? Uh, they are eight, six, and two. Three oh, boys. Uh, oh, sorry, all boys? All boys, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you must have a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Yeah, it make, when I bring them in the office, it makes for some disruptive days, but they love it here. So, so what do you do then to, uh, you know, obviously busy, busy uh, work schedule, busy home life. What do you do to find that, uh, that, uh, I guess, inner peace, uh, you know, in, in, in terms of what you want to do on a personal level. And do you have different hobbies or passions or interests? Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot of, I think, like a lot of parents, your hobbies become your, or your hobbies are now your kids' hobbies. Yeah. Um, so going to kids' sports is definitely one. Playing squash. Um, something that I've got, in, got into more recently and something that I'm trying to bring to our team at Fuel is meditation um, and something that I feel very, very, very strongly about is mental health and making sure that everybody takes the time to focus on mental health. Um, we've gone as far as putting a uh, putting in a meditation slash restroom in our office cool. um, because I feel that it's something that is extremely, extremely important um, and has been has been uh, I guess swept under the carpet in, in the past. Yeah. How did you uh, uh, come to that? Like, uh, you know, uh, where did this idea to do the, the meditation come from? Well, my wife is my wife. I used to make fun of her because she likes to she likes to uh, do meditation and yoga. And so I made fun of her for a lot of years. And then um, I was having trouble sleeping, actually. And it was one thing that really changed my ability to to sleep and stay asleep. 
um, was meditation. And so it was really the first hand experience and the success I had with it that, that sold me on it. And, um, and then and it's funny cause now when I bring it up with our, with our, bring it up with the team, everybody has the same issues. Yeah. It's just, people don't want to talk about it. I mean, even other business owners, um, I'm part of, a, um, um, some business groups and we've talked about topics like this. And when those topics come up, it's amazing how many people actually have the same issues, but something in the past, I don't think people were comfortable talking about. Yeah. It's funny. Cause I know even this uh, morning I was talking to, uh, uh, a company that puts puts out a, a monthly health uh, index and uh, and you know the results are continuing to slide downwards in terms of people's mental health in uh, in this country. Uh, I guess you know uh, you know for entrepreneurs this is something that's obviously that has to be taken care of, right? Because if you're a leader of a company, uh, you got to really make sure. I guess your mental health is uh, is uh, taken care of, right? Absolutely, absolutely agree. Yeah, what um, uh, you know when you look at Calgary, uh, you know in the city, uh, uh, what makes it? A, well, let's start with you know the what makes it a good place to do business. I guess right now, uh, even with all the challenges that are out there. And I think you know Calgary. I still I still strongly believe Calgary is one of the best cities in the world to start a business. I think. The, the networking aspect of Calgary has always been um, something that uh, something that's really helped businesses get off the ground. Um, we are a hotbed of innovation in the city, and it's becoming more and more becoming more and more a hotbed of innovation. Um, so we do have an ecosystem that's that's ready for for new innovation, um, and then the networking component just helps to helps to put fire to those businesses. Um, very tight tight business community that. Uh, again, helps to helps to get businesses off the ground. Okay, great. Then, uh, Raj, is there anything else uh, you want to mention uh, that I didn't ask you about? No, that was awesome. I really appreciate you having me having me on, Mario. That was uh, it was a lot of fun. Okay, super. Thanks a lot for joining us today, Raj. Thanks so much. Okay, that was Raj Singh, who is founder and CEO of Fueled in Calgary. This has been Calgary's podcast on Canada's Podcast Network with Mario Taniguzzi as your host. Thanks for joining us today.